what is a step activation function why is it not being used anymore what are the problems associated with it let's see in this video hello everyone my name is shiva and welcome to my channel this is the fifth video in the series neural network from scratch in python in this series we have been discussing about neural networks and implementing them in pure python in our previous video we have seen why do we need an activation function and what happens if we don't have any activation function in the network we have also seen some important properties a function should have for using it as activation function in the network from now onwards we will go through different activation functions one by one and analyze their advantages and disadvantages and we will see the use cases we will start with step activation function and we will advance to the other activation functions in the coming videos let us consider a binary classification problem where the output should be yes or no so my output should be either 1 or 0 here this is actually the only case where the step activation function is useful so i am taking this example so now i have two inputs here right so my inputs are actually 1 and 0 so i am initializing the inputs here and waits for both the layers here we have to calculate the weighted sum here right so for that what we need to do so we need to calculate 1 into 1 plus 0 into 2 so this is for the first neuron uh, my this 1 and 0 are the inputs coming and 1 and 2 are the weights so this will be 1 and then for the so this is actually 1 and then for the second neuron it is actually 1 into 2 plus 0 into 3 so that that is 2 so here i will get 2 and for the third neuron it is 1 into 3 plus 0 into 4 so that is 3 so my weighted sums are actually 1 2 and 3 here so this is how you calculate the weighted sum till here we already know now we need to apply an activation function on top of this right so if you see this is what we have got so 1 2 and 3 now i am applying a binary step function so step function we already know uh, if it is less than 0 then it is 0 otherwise it's 1 so in our cases my values are greater than 1 right so my outputs will be 1 here 1 here and 1 here right and what are the weights for my uh, second layer this layer so the weights are actually 1 2 and 3 so this is what i have initialized in the previous one so now my weighted sum will be 1 into 1 plus 1 into 2 plus 1 into 3 so that's why we have got 6 here now this is again greater than 0 that's why i will get 1 as my output final output so this is a binary decision right so either 1 or 0 so that is the only case where you use a step activation function so in my use case i have considered actually 0 as the threshold so if it is greater than 0 then i will take it as 1 otherwise i will take it as 0 my output right but if you take the more general way of representation you can take it as theta so this theta can be any value so it can be any value even it can be like 5 i can say like okay y is equal to i will take 1 if uh, x is greater than or equal to 5 otherwise i will take 0 right so now here 5 is the threshold so you can take any threshold in the step function it's not like only zero so if you see the step function it is basically either zero or one right both are constant values we have seen in the previous video the most important property any activation function should have is it should be differentiable so for step function does the derivative exist yes the derivative is there but it is zero it's not like it is not differentiable it is differentiable but the value is zero why is it zero because my outputs are always 1 or 0 which are constant values so if you take derivative of a constant value you will get zero so that is one way even if you see actually graphically so derivative is actually rate of change if you see here the whole step function is fully flat there is no change right even if it is less than zero or greater than zero the change is nothing that's why the derivative is zero so now is there any problem with this one now my step function derivative is zero what is the problem with this uh, as you know like in back propagation uh, we update the weight values with respect to the gradient right so this is the gradient which is nothing but derivative 
So if my derivative is 0, my weight value will remain the same throughout the training. It will not update. So that's the problem with this one, with the step function. So we don't use this step function very often. We use it very rarely uh, in the initial days in 1960s uh, when this was introduced in McCulloch Fields and Perceptron. Then we used this one, but later we discarded this. We are not using this uh, activation function anymore. So there is another problem with this one. Uh, it can be used only for two classes because my outputs are either 1 or 0. So I cannot have uh, multiple values representing different classes. So these are the two drawbacks of this one and we don't use this one anymore. And there is one more drawback which is called threshold. So how do you decide on this threshold? By default we generally don't take any other threshold. We generally keep threshold as 0. This thresholding is actually a, a drawback here. So if you consider uh, what is the actual problem. Uh, if my input x is actually 1 or input is equal to 10 and input is equal to 100, right? In all these cases, my output is always 1. So it is not taking the quantity of the input or like the weightage of the input. So whatever the input it is, the output is always 1. That's the problem. So we should have a way of taking these values into account, right? So if if 10 and 100 are both are different values, my output also should have two different values for both the inputs. So we are kind of missing the uh, weightage factor or importance factor of the inputs. So once it crosses this threshold, whatever the value it is, my output is the same. So yeah, derivative is zero and hard threshold and only used for binary classification. These are the drawbacks. If you see the Python code, basically it is very simple. If it is less than zero, then you return zero. Otherwise you return one, it's quite simple. And uh, yeah, as we have seen, for all the x values, my derivative is 0 because it's a constant value. So this is the Python implementation. It's very simple. That's all from this video. Thanks for watching. If you like the content, please hit the like button and comment if you have any suggestions or corrections. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos. I have shared the playlist and resources in the description below. In the next video, we will look at sigmoid activation function in detail. See you there.